using Python strings in Hangman. Here is a script that runs a game of Hangman. You can start this script by simply entering hangman.py or you can provide hangman.py a word to be guessed. The operation is the same. The user simply doesn't know the word if no parameter is given to Hangman. And there is also a built-in option to give up by inputting nothing at the input line. The latter of these two options, no parameter, is useful when the user wants to play. The former of these two options, providing a word as an argument, is useful when you want to start the game and pass it along to someone else, or to debug your code when writing the game. Let's take a look at hangman.py, and in particular, how it uses strings and lists in its implementation. You'll see that it uses two functions get word so far, which takes guest letters and word as its parameters, guest letters being a list and word being a string and the method play hangman which has a parameter user word which defaults to none and we'll see how that works when we get to that point in the code let's go down to the main entry point in the code the bottom of the script, if name equals main with two underscores on either side, remember that this is the line of code that says if we are running this module or if we are running this Python script on its own as a standalone program, this is the code that will be executed first. So under if name equals main, we have an if else statement. If the length of sys.argv is greater than one. Okay, what does this mean? Sys is a module that we imported at the top that contains various useful methods and values that are related to the operating system. argv is the argument vector. So every everything that is passed in as a positional parameter to the script is stored in the argument vector. So it's a list of arguments. So what we're asking here is is the length of the argument vector greater than one? In other words, is there more than one value stored in this list called argv? Why more than one? Well, the first value stored in argv at position zero is the name of the script itself. And this is useful to access 
if you're printing a usage message. sysargv1 and every index beyond that stores a positional parameter. So we're asking here, if the length of the argument vector is greater than 1, that means we have a positional parameter stored at index 1. And so when we play hangman, we will pass that positional parameter to the hangman, play hangman uh, function. Else, we'll simply call play hangman without any argument. Okay, so let's look at play hangman. So when, in, when an argument to a function, when the parameter is specified as a default, we have an option of passing that parameter to the function or not. So user word, if we have passed a word to the function, will be equal to that word. As we saw earlier, when I ran hangman.py hello, user word evaluates to hello. But when running the script without any parameter, user word will evaluate to none. So when we come down here, os.system clear, that just clears the screen, if not user word. So this is saying if user word is none, if nothing is stored at user word. So if not user word, we're going to choose a random word from the Swadesh list, which is a good source for just single words. And all we're doing here, I won't go through it in great detail, but all we're doing here is making a random choice of lines in the Swadesh file, which is one word per line, and making sure that we have a long enough word and that there is not an unwanted character like a parenthesis in that word, and then breaking when we have a word that works. Else, we set the user word as the word. Or rather, we set the word as the user word. Okay, and then we print hangman. We set our number of guesses at, as 10. And we start this list called guest. And then we're ready to go into the main loop of the game. Now notice everything that we want to do just one time has been done outside of the while loop. So the target word has been set just once. And these variables, which will be changing inside of the while loop, we only want to initialize them once. And so we set num guesses to 10 here, and we reference this list, which is now an empty list, outside of the while loop. Okay, let's look in the while loop. While number of guesses is greater than zero, and of course right now it is, there are 10 guesses left. We take a new guess from the user as input, and then we can do several things. If the guess is nothing, we're going to break out of the loop. This is a way to give up. If we check down at the bottom of the loop, it's going to say, here lies the outlaw who couldn't guess. And then by using the format method, we put the word into this string that essentially says the game is over. And again, the syntax for format is simply dot format. This is right after the end of a string, so our string here in double quotes. Dot format, and then as an argument, anything that you want to appear, any variable that you want to appear, inside of the curly braces. So the curly braces are 
kind of acting as special characters inside the string here when used with the format method. Okay, let's go back up. So, if we input the empty string, then the game is over. We break out of the loop and we get the game over message. All right. Having confirmed it's not the empty string, we can check that the guess is good, is what we want, a single character. Since we play Hangman by guessing the word one character at a time. So here we're using a method that can be used on strings, is alpha. And you may recall this method says return true if the string, in this case the string stored at guess, if the string is all letters, that is, does not contain digits or punctuation, etc. has to be A through Z. Okay, so that's one condition we want to meet, that the guess is a letter. Or not length of the guess is equal to 1. So not only are we checking that the guess is only letters, we are checking that the guess is only one letter. So it must be a string of length 1. And then we get a cute little message if these conditions are not met, and we continue, so we go back up. We don't do anything to numb guesses, and we don't do anything to guessed, because we're choosing to be nice. If the guess is in guessed, okay, now we don't know what guessed is. Well, we do, but we haven't seen anything happen to it yet. Guessed, we know, is an empty list. Remember, we initialized it up here. By the time we reach this point in the code, it's possible that guessed could be populated with letters, that it's it could be storing values that are single letter strings. And you can see right here that this part of the code, guessed.append guess, is going to be executed for every letter that is guessed by this point in the code. We're catching certain cases. If the guess is not a good one, it's not going to reach this point. We're not going to store it in guessed. If the guess is already in the list, we're not going to reach this point. We're not going to store it in the list again. But let's say we do reach this point with several letters. Append, this method append, places the letter as a new value, and specifically as the value at the highest used index in the list guessed. So we can use this syntax, guess in guessed, to check whether or not that letter has already been guessed. And then we have another cute message. I don't know who came up with those. Followed by continue, which says the code will not be executed below this point. We go back up and restart the while loop. If we do reach this point, that is, if all these tests pass, then this is the next code that is run. We're going to append guess to the list called guessed, as we just talked about. And the next thing we're going to do is get a string called words so far from our other function in this code, get words so far which takes as its parameters both the list guessed and the word, which is, once again, the target word. So we'll take a look at this method in the next video.